What's up everybody, before we get into today's review, please subscribe to our channel. Click that little button that's either right there right now or it's gonna pop up in a second, the little blue gearist button. Click that and subscribe, it means the world to us and helps us out and now let's talk about this product. <laughs> What's up everybody, Brandon here from Gearist, and today we're gonna to be taking a look at the Wave Daiichi number two from Mizuno Running. Now this is a review that our run category manager, Lori, did, and believe it or not, this was her first pair of Mizuno running shoes that she's run in, especially a pair of trail shoes. Now, what's interesting about this is that even though this is the Mizuno Wave Daiichi number two, this is the first Wave Daiichi with broad US release. You could get it maybe in a retailer here or there in number one, but this was largely released in other parts the world and not the United States. So we are among everybody with having this be our first shot at the Wave Daiichi, and so let's start talking about it. Starting with the outsole issue, we see a combination of Mizuno's X10 carbon rubber along with Michelin using their rubber in this shoe. Now, since we really like to see brands working together, especially brands like Michelin, who are not necessarily inherent or endemic rather to the running shoe game or to the boot game or to the outdoor game at all, except for in bike tires and car tires, it's really, really exciting to see these brands work together to make a really good product. Now, as you can see in this image here, around the perimeter of the outsole, we do have kind of a semi-trapezoidal kind of thing going on, while in the middle, right down the middle of the outsole there, we see a much more random pattern. Both the lug layout as well as the rubber are proprietary to Michelin, and while there are no flex grooves per se in the forefoot or the rear foot of this shoe, the only thing that kind of resembles one is that XTA ride or extra ride right under the midfoot that we see right here. This is to both allow for and control torsional movement. Kind of a controlled ride in that area, if you will, to have the front and the back of the shoe working together, but not in some loosey-goosey fashion. Now, during your testing in this, Lori took the Wave Daiichi number two on a lot of dry and muddy terrains. And what was interesting about this is that she found that while the lugs weren't super deep, or aren't super deep, rather, with some of them being as shallow as about three millimeters, they actually did really quite well because that stickiness of the rubber she found to really affect the way that the traction held up. As far as durability, she also found that they held up very, very well with probably at this point about 60 or so miles on them. There's really very little sign of wear. Now, one other thing that we should mention about the depth of the lugs, regardless of durability, although as over time they will wear down, this might affect things, with something that's only three millimeters deep in places, you may find yourself in looser or more muddy terrain, something that requires a more cleat light lug. You might find these a little bit lacking here or there, though she didn't really find that in her experience. Lori did find the shoe to be pretty stiff, something which we'll talk about a little bit more in the midsole and the ride section of the shoe. But one of the things that she really enjoyed based on the fact that there are more shallow lugs is that this made a good transition from some road or path type of running into something that is more straight up Trail oriented. Now this is really good if you run on something that you have to go through a connector or something like that. There are plenty of us who have to, or like to rather, run to our trailhead that might be nearby. And this is a good shoe that's gonna be able to do that. Now of course, keep in mind that running on roads might wear down the softer, stickier rubber from a trail shoe. But in general, this is a great way to get there. As we move on to the midsole of the Wave Daiichi number two, we see the Mizuno has once again used their euphoric foam, which while being resilient, also provides a good amount of cushioning without too much volume. In this shoe, the rear foot wave plate where the wave part of the name comes in is articulated to be able to adapt to different types of trail. Lori did feel the springiness and the absorption of that wave plate, but mostly on descents because as you may know by now, Lori runs pretty much way up on her toes in that forefoot area much of the time. Now in terms of stack height, the Wave Daiichi number two has 29 millimeters of stack in the heel and 17 millimeters of stack in the forefoot for a net drop of 12 millimeters. Now, while this is typically more than Lori or even I would reach for, in this case, because it's a trail shoe, she didn't feel that it really affected her very much. Now, since we're talking about the midsole, this is also a good time to mention that extra ride again, which we mentioned a second ago. Again, she found the shoe to be pretty stiff. And while in front of the midsole on the forefoot side in that forefoot area where there are no flex grooves that we can see in the outsole, uh, this is where she found it to actually have quite a bit of flex. But as you get into the extra ride, which is right in the midfoot there, this is a place where based on the fact that it looks like it's crossed and you would think that there'd be some torsional movement there, it seems to be actually much more rigid and that seems to be something that's controlled
rolling the foot to a degree that you wouldn't necessarily expect. As we move into talking about the upper, we see two basic kinds of mesh on the upper of the Wave Daiichi number two. Now the first one being the main body of the shoe there, but the second being a more open and airy mesh right over top of the vamp, which is right over top of the toes, meant to obviously provide a little more breathability for the foot when it gets steamy in there. Now the support structure on the Wave Daiichi, and this is kind of something that both Lori and I wondered about because the support structure is completely stitched on in the shoe. Now this seems like kind of a step backward for Mizuno because we have seen in the Hitogami, was it the Hitogami? One of their, Hayate maybe? One of their trail shoes, we've seen them using those bonded overlays in the past, those either 3D printed on or uh, heat bonded or whatever, but we've seen not stitched on overlays in a lot of Mizuno shoes in the past. So it's very interesting that they decided to go with this heavier and a little outdated method at this point. Now, I will say that they were certainly beefy according to Lori and certainly held up very, very well, but they're also gonna add a little bit of weight, a little bit of bulk, and they're not as cool looking all the time. For the rest of the upper, she felt like the foam around the tongue and the collar were a good amount, remembering of course that Lori likes a little more foam around that collar to keep out debris and also keep her relatively narrow heels nice and in place. And speaking of that heel, the heel counter has a good structure. It's very, very rigid. So if you're looking for something that's a little more flexible in that area, this might not be it. Lori does mention, and I mentioned this actually pretty recently, as she would like to see this have a gusseted tongue. I don't quite understand why some trail shoes don't have a gusseted tongue. Regardless of that, she didn't find there was any real problem with debris or anything getting in. Everything seemed to stay out pretty well. But to have a gusseted tongue, adds very, very little weight and that additional amount of protection from debris getting into the shoe. Now, as we move into talking about fit, Lori does mention here that she felt the Wave Daiichi number two ran a touch large. So if you're on the fence between shoes, just account for that in terms of the sizing as to which one you go with or buy both and just expect to maybe return one. Now, as I mentioned a minute ago about the heel counter being very, very rigid, Lori said that it's actually a little too rigid, a little too built up. Now, what she felt like this did was perhaps add a little bit of weight that was unnecessary to do in the rear foot of the shoe, but also maybe a little more rigidity and not letting the foot quite function as you might want to. And maybe this is kind of a holdover from that extra ride in the midfoot there. Speaking of the midfoot, once again, as I mentioned a second ago, Lori felt that that midfoot, while it fits well around the upper, that midfoot stiffness in the extra ride really kind of, it, it just adds a lot of inflexibility to the shoe that she would like to see it go away. And what's interesting is that we move into the forefoot, we see a very flexible shoe and something that she really, really liked, especially as somebody who is largely up on that forefoot. And this kind of begs the question, as Lori poses, why is this a different shoe from the rear to the front? It's like we've got two kind of different shoes slapped together. We've got a very stiff rear foot from the midfoot back, and then from the midfoot forward, it's a very flexible shoe. Now, we both agree that there are probably people who are looking for something like this, who want that amount of control in the rear foot or in this amount of flexibility, something that's looking for the foot to not have to do as much, but operate by way of what the shoe wants to do. In this case, Lori and I as well would love to see something where the forefoot and the foot itself is what's controlling the action of what's going on in the ground rather than the shoe trying to pardon the pun, shoehorn things the way that it wants things to go. As we start talking about the ride, while Lori did find these to be more stiff than she might like, she actually really liked the responsiveness of the shoe. Now, having had this on muddy trails and dry trails and really buffed out single track, as well as a couple of roads and paths here and there, she really enjoyed the ground feel, said it was fantastic. And that those three millimeter deep lugs don't seem to get too clogged up with mud, though there is the ability for that to happen, of course, depending on the sticky mud that you're in. We have some really sticky mud here in Colorado that it doesn't matter. You could run in on a flat shoe and it's gonna stick to it. But she didn't feel like these got stuck up with a bunch of mud at all. As far as weight goes, these come in at 9.6 ounces and a women's size eight and 11.2 ounces in a men's size nine. Now this is not a light shoe. And so adding something like mud and things like that are certainly going to stack on the ounces. And going back to touch on the upper again, the fact that they are stitched on overlays instead of bonded overlays and the rigidity and overbuiltness, if you will, of that heel counter, this is a great place where this shoe could easily drop a couple of ounces by some engineering modifications to it. One thing that Lori really liked about this was the versatility of the shoe and its ability to go and get you to a 
trail on a little bit of path and then go and get on something more technical or be on something more buffed out or something more rooty or something more rocky. This is a shoe that can really handle all of those things. And because it's only at three millimeter deep lugs, you're not gonna feel like you're on such a technical lugged out trail shoe. Lori really enjoyed the Wave Daiichi number two in general. Now, while she does feel it's certainly built up and could have some room for improvement in places, especially regarding the flexibility and the weight, this is a shoe that she feels like is so flexible and versatile that somebody looking for kind of a multi-tool type of running shoe, this could be one of those things that works for you. Now, at $130, this certainly reflects that overall uptick in running shoes that I have mentioned several times here in the past. It's not a huge deal. Again, it's going to be a very durable shoe with that Michelin and that X10 carbon rubber compound that both are coming together on that outsole and the upper seems to hold up very well despite the fact that we've got stitched on overlays. Those things may be a little outdated, but they are very beefy and will keep things together quite well. And still, since the Daiichi's been out for a little bit, please check those links down in the description of this video because I can almost guarantee you we have found it for much cheaper than that $130 price tag if you just click on those links below. Now guys, before we get into our question of the day, I once again wanna ask you to please subscribe to our channel. Just click that little button right over there that says Gearist on it and that will pop up a subscribe button. If you're already subscribed, please share with your friends. Share Facebook, share Gearist.com, all of the Gearist stuff on Instagram and Twitter and what have you, and reach out to us. Let us know what's up. We wanna hear from you. So please don't hesitate to tag your pictures or your posts on Twitter or your posts on Facebook with hashtag I'm a Gearist. That's I-M-A-G-E-A-R-I-S-T. Now, our question of the day. How stiff do you like your trail shoe? There are people that like a really stiff trail shoe, but then there are people that like that flexibility over some rocks and roots and things like that. Let us know down in the comments section below. Once again, guys, thank you so much for spending a few minutes with us today. If you got any questions, let us know down in the comments or shoot an email to info at As always, get out there, get sweaty, and we will see you next time. <laughs>